Not sure how well you can see me here, but uh, j I, I'm <laughs> not even in the a parking lot at the movie theater like I was before. I, I, I went to turn my camera back on and the battery was dead. So I had to drive all the way home, get batteries, and, and I had to wait a few minutes because someone pulled up next to me and they didn't want me by thinking I was a weirdo out here making a, you know, I don't know, just weird. Anyway, RoboCop. <clears throat> The one thing I can say about it is it didn't have the same punch to it that the original film had. With that said, I mean, is it a bad movie? Is it a bad remake slash adaption, adaptation? Um, I don't know. Pardon me, my uh, Pollo Tropical is arguing with my stomach right now. I don't know if that picked up on camera, but uh, I might be having to run for the border in a few minutes. <clears throat> Regardless, friggin' I, I had I, I very rarely had an had a movie like this where I have no opinion of it uh, or I can't articulate it properly. The Obviously, it's PG-13, so a lot. Of th I don't. I don't know why they did it. I don't know if that was to try to reach a broader audience with it or what. But the thing—that's the thing. I, each progressive movie in the original series was like the second one was PG-13. The third one, I think, was like just PG or something, or maybe it was PG-13 as well. But it's like you kept getting until it was like you know TV movies or something like that. I think they had a t t two different TV shows at one point, but regardless. Obviously, the first one was popular enough to spawn sequels. This movie, I don't think will get a sequel. If it does, I'd be very surprised. Now... <laughs> be quiet, chicken. <laughs> we, um... Okay, the movie opens up... <clears throat> Freaking MGM movie, so you have the lion, but instead it's like Samuel Jackson warming up before speaking, which Samuel Jackson's basically playing some kind of you know political machine, uh, like freaking CNN, you know, commentation kind of guy where you have people, you know, the kind of person sort of like, um. I can't remember what his bleeding name is now, but, um, you know, where, where they would cut off O'Reilly. It's almost like O'Reilly in a way where, you know, they'll cut off somebody before they even allowed to make a point, which actually does happen in this movie. Um, the whole, the whole thing's basically centers around the whole fear that's going on right now about un unmanned drones and stuff like that, which... <laughs> From the movie's perspective, I don't know which way they, they're they tilting with it. I mean, because if you go by Samuel L. Jackson's character, you know, they're pro it. They're totally for it. No problem. But everybody that's for it has got their hemorrhoids wrapped around their neck. The, you know, friggin', you got friggin' Mr. Batman Mom as the the head of uh, Omnicore, a division of Omni Consumer Products, not just Omni Consumer Products, but and you know him. You got Samuel L. Jackson's character with the bad freaking hairpiece. I don't know what that was about, but so it almost makes it act like supposed to be for it I don't know but anyway it as a Robocop movie no I mean I, I I'm kind of torn up on it. I don't I, I mean there was it was well it was a well put together film no no doubt but it was it's kind of hard to put. I mean, if they would have made it rated R, it might have been better. But then again, 90% of the movie probably would have just been boobs. So, 
boobs cussing in gore, which, yeah, the first movie had that, but it was properly proportioned. And so were the violence and gore. <laughs> uh, it's a terrible joke, and I apologize for it. Okay. Obviously, you know, it, it, it's like... It's like a Smallville of RoboCop. Here's everything you know, but we just decided to throw it in a blender or Cuisinart or whatever, and here's the product. It, like I said, it starts off with Samuel L. Jackson talking about how everybody's robophobic, and, you know, of course, when I hear that, the first thing that pops in my mind is, like, the first episode of Futurama, where, uh, I think Fry meets Bender, and... Bender, Bender ends up saying something that's like, hey, I'm not a robosexual or something like that. So I'm like, yeah, robo. everybody's robophobic. That just got this bounced around in my brain probably the wrong way. Uh, so there's that. And they show, like, the first, like, before the, the opening credits, which it, like, took, it seemed like it took a while to get to that, you know... But it was like the open. It was almost like a James Bond movie. The way it, it took took its time to get to the opening credit sequence, which I don't know. It so it they ended up doing a military exercise with you know the uh, news reporters for Jackson's you know CNN broadcast, and they ended up. Um, they set up a plot point, which it was so out there that <sighs> they marked the, the the news crew as a like code red, basically. Which there's like purple and green, and then there's reds. Well, purple, I think greens were like the ED two oh nines or ED. 260 or 2600, whatever number they, they, I forgot what they threw on there, but you know, the big honk and you know, cool looking robot, which redesigned is not bad looking, I'll give them that. So they have that, they have actual full on robotic humanoids, you know, just robots patrolling, and they're going around scanning everybody, and they're like in Afghanistan or you know, some Arab, you know, country, and they're scanning everybody, uh, ocular identification, they're, you know, they're scanning all the, uh, you know, their databases to see if, if anybody are criminals. Then there's like a group of suicide bombers that come out and their intention was to die on camera fighting these robots. So, political commentary on America being, I don't know, maybe, I, I I'm, don't follow politics as much as probably people would want me to do, and probably as much as I should, but I, I don't want to, anyway, so there's that, that happens, and Okay, then you have, you know, Michael Keaton. And he's like, well, we, we, you know, we should have this in America. And Samuel Jackson saying the same thing. There's no reason why we shouldn't have this in America. You know, the streets would be safer, da, da, da. You know. And then they decide, okay, well, Congress has this law saying that there should be no, you know, robots... Um, there's this bill that forbids, you know, robot sentinels and whatever else. Oh, by the way, there was an advert for Days of Future Past in the, before the film, but I'll get to that in a minute. <laughs> um, they, so they decide, well, you know, they have like a hearing with the senator who's against it. And so he... You know, and they're like, you know, well, can it, can your drones, can your robots, can they feel? And they're like, well, and he's, you know, avoiding the question, you know, and Keaton's like, well, they don't feel hate or bigotry or racism or da da da. And he's like, you know, answer the question, can they feel? If they kill a child, what do they feel? And he's like, nothing. So he's like, okay, 
So go eat crap and die. <laughs> Basically, that's what the senator. So they're like, well, we need to be able to put a man in a machine, which is that was floating around as a clip, and I think in one of the uh, trailers for for the film. So somebody who's been getting some kind—I don't know if he's a drug lord or if he's just some dude that's amassing weapons and who's been taking weapons out of the Detroit Police Department's, you know, uh, evidence locker, who's apparently in cahoots with the police chief played by, and what's funny is this woman, I constantly think she's freaking thin, uh, Lynn Thigpen from the Where in the World is Car Carmen San Diego game show that was on PBS for a while, but it isn't. It's actually the woman who was on Without a Trace. I can't remember her name, but the the uh, the, the African American lady who was on that show. So, yeah, she's like the police chief, and she's crooked too. So he ends up killing Murphy because he's getting too close to finding out, you know, what he's been doing, whatever this make it is that he's been doing. So that happens. Then they, so then in order to save Murphy, you know, he comes along, they wanted somebody who's who was emotionally neutral or more in control of their emotions because apparently, you know, they, they have a doctor that's part of Omnicore that, ha, you know, you does like cybernetic, you know, replacements for limbs or whatever. And this guy had both of his hands replaced and he was playing guitar because he, he says, like, well, I never played it, you know, since I have had, since I had these hands and the doctor's like, well, it doesn't matter. It comes from you, your control of it. But it's the, the system, the programming you know, the control that the person has over the limbs, if they get too emotional, it starts breaking down the programming to where it doesn't work proper. So he was getting emotional playing, and so he starts screwing up. I guess that's a good way to get around the idea of, you know, dealing, you know, with when it comes later with Robocop, but getting rid of his emotions and stuff like that. I don't know. I'll talk to him about that in a minute, but <clears throat> get rid of the idea. So anyway, so Murphy gets his car blown up. You know, he goes home after he, they put the thing on his car up underneath his car. He goes home must have been on a timer or something. I don't know. This is the dumbest thing. So he goes home, kisses his wife, puts his son to bed. Him and his wife in an awkward love scene that's just sort of shoehorned is the best way I can put it. Shoehorned in there. And all of a sudden his car alarm starts going off. Okay. He goes to the window. Chip, chip, nothing. Chip, chip, nothing. Apparently, everybody has controls in their thumbs because he wasn't holding anything. And then there was a guy later on who I think was the voice of, uh, of, um, Hiccup in How to Train Your Dragon, which they gave him a beard so he would look older, but he's, it's freaking Hiccup. Okay. He sounds like a young cartoon guy. I, you, you can't get around that. So, anyway, so he, waggles his thumb at his car and it doesn't stop so he goes out and i don't know if he pushed something on his key fob and it opened the door automatically because it didn't look like it had handles on the outside either that or he was driving the car from the movie the car i don't know but anyway so the door pops up and he goes to grab it and then boom he pulls it open a little bit and then boom he it blows up and he's still alive Okay, still alive. He's missing an arm and a leg. Um, and I wish I was creative enough to make a joke about that. Um, but so they go to his way, he's his eyes, like you know, I guess fire damage or something like that to his eyes. So he's blind in one eye and he's missing an arm and a leg. So they go to his wife and they're like, We can save him, you have to sign off on it. Da, da, da. So they, I guess they finally convince her or whatever because time is of the essence, of course. So then they build them. And here's the thing. They actually, as far as everything they kept for on kept of his original body was his, his right hand, which in all the peripheral information, they explain that. 
The reason why he still has a hand because they, I guess a way to prove that there's a man in, in, in the machine, you know, the human touch, that kind of thing. Never mentioned in a movie once. So, I mean, on, on the websites for, you know, Omnicore.com and all those other things like that. Yeah, they mention it, but nothing. And he has like his lungs, his throat, and his his head in like you know his brain, but like part of his skull's missing with like a plexi thing over it, and his lungs are in like this plexi container. I don't know if he has a stomach. We never see him eat. They hook him up to a blood like dialysis or something like that, you know, to clean his blood, and then. Ever seen him eat, so no baby food for him. Um, <laughs> ped, ped, Robocop. No, no Gerber for you. No, uh, so... What they just show is, like, his, his esophagus and stuff like that inside this, you know, again, plexi, plexiglass, uh, whatever. And I guess it all... It, it, it's flexible. Flexi, plexiglass. Flexiglass? I don't know. Anyway. So... They do that to him. They make, Robo they make him Robocop. And he's in the classic, you know, gray colors... They do they do a throwback to the original look as like prison uh, like riot gear or something like that and then they do they free, uh, what was it hiccup pushes a button and they show it transforming into something else with lights on it and they're like you know and freaking Batman's like no it's you know that's crap you know let's redesign it and paint it you know make it more tactical and then paint them black just stupid. I don't, I don't like that look. I'm sorry. It's just... It's not, it doesn't scream police. They do give him a badge, by the way. It's etched like it's imprinted onto his chest armor. Anyway, so... What happens? Okay, so they make him into Robocop. He freaks out. You know, when he once he finally wakes up, he freaks out, and then he runs... He literally runs off. And the whole time he's seen from his vision, like, you know, kind of like the the other movie did, the original movie, and, you know, he's seen non-threat, 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 or whatever. He runs out the door. Apparently, he's actually in China, because he just, like, jumps over the wall and then rice patties. I mean, really build places like that? I don't know. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> it's right side of, outside of Sony headquarters. Is there, like, rice patties or something like that? I don't know. Anyway, so he runs out. They shut him off. So he dives into the rice paddies, and then all the villagers surround him. And you know, I don't know. But anyway, so they surround him. I was gonna try to make a joke, but it didn't come up. So, <laughs> so they put him back in, and you know, he's like, "What happened to me? Let me see what you guys did." So that's when they remove everything, and they show like the only parts of him that are him. That was a cool sequence, so give him that. But, um, you know, so from there, you know, he gets put back into the police force. They download all the, you know, CCT footage and, you know, police files and everything into his brain, and then he starts focusing on his own death. And that overloads his, you know, emotions, and so they ended up dropping his dopamine levels to, like, 2%. Which made him dull and made him non-responsive. No emotion. They killed his emotion, basically. Um, obviously, you know, then he you know, he goes about his business. He's cutting down crime. Da-da-da. Samuel. They, they keep cutting the freaking Samuel L. Jackson's O'Reilly factor. And, which I'm sorry. It was a freaking annoying thing for them to put in there. I understand there's a whole political issue and a political slant going on at the time, but... With the 80s movie, it was like, it was almost to the point where the society had almost gone down so far, um, mor morally speaking, that we'll try anything to fix the problem. <laughs> Not too far off from now, but whatever. Anyway, so... So they keep cutting back to you know Samuel Jackson. He does an interview with um, the Lee, you know, with friggin' Michael Keaton and the senator who's against you know having robots. And Samuel Jackson cuts him off right right when he's you're gonna make a point. 
And then, <clears throat> you know, so going from there, uh, th they do a training exercise in a building, which I'm sorry, techno yodeling. I mean, they have like your standard kind of, you know, modern day action music, which isn't rock and roll. It's like this kind of semi pseudo technical techno music or whatever. And in the middle of it, yodeling. This guy, I, I don't know what bleeding song it was. And I, I really don't even want to find out because it's just, just. I was. It's the only time during the movie I freaking rolled my eyes. That in the time when Samuel Jackson on on his show says RoboCop, and then they play the music, the RoboCop theme behind it. Stupid. So, anyways, um, you know, RoboCop starts. You know, I think, uh, you know, his emotions start coming back, whatever. He starts overriding the programming. Uh, Murphy does. And then he goes after, he goes back to his home, the scene of his, you know, the crime of his, of his murder, which he wasn't murdered. Okay. Attempted murder. But they say that, you know, his, that he's investigating his murder. They said that in the movie, like twice. He wasn't killed. Murphy was dead in the original 80s movie he died he was cl barely clinging on if anything like there were still electrodes going through him he technically did die but they used his brain or whatever as a computer and just shoved him into the you know into the machine into the you know the armor or whatever and used him that way then his personality started coming back this was the opposite. It's like they wanted Murphy to be RoboCop. So anyway, and like, cause they, after they doped him up and they did like the whole press conference where they reveal him, hey, here's Murphy or whatever. He comes out, doesn't say anything. He's scanning the crowd for for threats, basically. And he finds one guy who's been who's like a rapist and a murderer or something like that. And he was he's at, been at large for like nine years or something like that. He jumps out in the crowd and, and shoots him with a t with a taser. Um. That made Samuel L. O'Reilly really happy. Uh, so anyway, so they go through the movie, and you know he he goes and he he, he stops the uh, you know he stops a drug lord, which had no bearing on the rest of the movie other than oh yeah you know I guess maybe the first movie did it. So and that was a thing, and it was like a, a, a throughout the entire first movie, this had nothing. There was nothing there. The first movie had it was a drug epidemic going on, you know, through the streets, freaking Detroit, and you know it was uh, you know it was a part of the plot. Here it was just there, so and I honestly I like I told you earlier I didn't see the original movie at all, and probably in over a year or more. So this is just from memory, if I'm recalling anything. So, you know, he does, he, he gets rid of the drug people, and they don't, he doesn't drive a car in this, he has a motorcycle, because motorcycles are cool, because we say so. Um, it's kind of dumb. Anyway, so he, he uncovers the whole debacle at the police station, which one of the guys who was like the weapons officer for OCP... He, he's like, he was the one that was getting the weapons from, you know, him with, uh, friggin' what's-her-face, the police chief were, you know, backhanded dealing with this, this guy who tried to kill Murphy. Um, Murphy then, you know, when he finally uncovers that, he goes and he goes in and he shoots the one, uh, crooked cop because he was about to shoot him. Shoots the other one with the taser, goes into the chief, and he was try about to get a confession, which if 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 everything he witnesses can then be downloaded, or they can watch it, what he's thinking, I don't see a reason why any, you know whatever. So anyways, the guy the guy shut him down right then and there because he saw you know that it was gonna uncover everything. So 
I guess OCP might have been on in on it. I don't know. Uh, I'm not entirely sure. So they're trying to keep. They're trying to put distance between Murphy and his family. Uh, there are several times when you know his wife, or at least once where his wife confronts Murphy, and he's just so duty bound that he couldn't even recognize really recognize who she was, and you know went off. And I'm trying to remember what else happened. You know, it comes down to where he go. He has to go back to the OCP tower, and you know he's going after. Oh yeah, because after that happened in the police station, they basically said, "Oh, complications. Murphy's dead," which wasn't true. Then the doctor who helped. Murphy become Robocop is actually not that bad. He's not really a bad guy necessarily. Uh, though he's more, you know, he's more, he has more morality about him as a bad guy. So he wants to do the right thing. So I don't know, whatever. So at the end of it, he. He, you know, climbs up the building, not literally, he goes through the building, he fights off like three different ED robots, and goes up there, Keaton tells his wife all the organic parts of your husband are dead, uh, the robotic parts have gone bonkers and they're com it's coming here to, 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 to kill me. Obviously, she doesn't buy it, because as soon as he comes up there, he's like, you know, he tells his son and his wife, Move, move away, I'm going to do this. Well, okay, remember earlier when I said it was a plot point about the whole color coding, you know, thing. Both the guy who was um, the weapons dude and friggin' ba you know, Beetlejuice there, they both had wristbands that made them code red, so non-threat couldn't destroy them. Instead of the, I mean, it's kind of a different way of going around the whole thing that you know, it's against your programming to kill me. Instead of it just being this person, it's apparently if they have the wristband on, whatever. So he could have easily he went over there and just ripped it off his arm. But he sort of goes against his programming, which if he apparently they said if he did it, it would shut him down. If she even starts seeing system failure in his in his vision, but it doesn't do it, he ends up shooting him anyway. So, goes back, he, you know, he lost an arm in the fight with the, uh, the ED robots. You know, his family, you know, he's laying on the ground, you know, you think he might be dead because friggin' Batman was gonna shoot him in the face, and he doesn't, or I guess he doesn't, or he shot him, but it wasn't in the face, or it was in his neck, I don't know. Because, yeah, Robocop, the only part of him that's fleshy is his face, so, why not shoot him there? And apparently some... A particular caliber of bullet would be able to go through his, his armor. So, at the end of the movie, they give, they give him his original gray suit back, or gray body back, and you see him with his family, and they close on uh, friggin' O'Reilly Factor again, and that's it. And and he's, you know, and, he, and he's bad-mouthing the doctor who basically became a whistleblower and told about, you know... I knew what I was doing, but I was misguided, but my research is still sound, da da da. And movie in. Hopefully that was recording, I don't want to have to redo that. <clears throat> Sorry, my computer just made a noise, I think it stopped recording. Anyway, so, that's how it ended. Overall, I don't think it was worth them making. I mean, yeah, there's a political aspect or whatever, which seems to be the more overriding, you know, theme to the film. They should, if they were going to make it, make, remake it, it should have made or maybe paint a picture of that landscape. One thing that the original film did, did well was set the world you were in by the whole thing with the fake commercials, the TV reports, and that kind of stuff like that gave you a sense of okay well this is the world this is the mentality the 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 world view basically there is not really a world view here other than this whole you know 
pissing contest between left and right wing, basically. And which, you know, if I want to watch that, if I wanted anything to do about that, I was watch, you know, the news and that's it. Or follow politics, which is something I don't want to do. So, yeah, there's that. Overall, if you like the original movie, I mean, this is objectively, I have to think about it objectively as its own movie. <sighs> See, that's the thing. I, I I tried to watch it for what it was, but obviously I'm making, you know, I keep making comments about it throughout the thing. I, I don't... I, I, re I really can't look at it objectively, honestly. I, I As an action film, I guess it might be good um, on its own. As a RoboCop movie, no. Honestly, it's... It's like, the, it's the Saturday morning equivalent. You know, it, which, not even that, the freaking probably cartoon, cartoon was better than this. I'm not saying this is bad, it's just, it's a bad Robocop movie. Could have called it anything else. Honestly, what I really wish they would have done is, you know, have some kind of Skynet, you know, something in there about Skynet, so maybe try to do, you know, Robocop versus Terminator at some point, because, heck, they are, you know, they did freaking, you know, Per, uh, Predator Alien, Predator vs. Alien, and there were comic books and even a Super Nintendo game of uh, Terminator vs. Robocop, so that made me happy, and then nothing ever came of that, so. If they would have set up some Skynet stuff, maybe I would have cared, but I, I guess overall, not really excited about it, so I won't be buying it on DVD. I'm probably going to go inside and watch the original movie, just because... <sighs> Yeah, it's better. The original's better. Um, not because it's a remake, but because it, it, the movie's just... I don't... It doesn't have as much punch to it. Whether it's because of the rating, whatever, I don't know. But, uh... Anyways, I'm shutting the lights off. I've got to go inside. i got to pee. It's, I've had three of these already today, and i I got to pee. So, um, with that, you know, if you've seen it, you know, hey, you know, drop in the comments what you think about each of these, these movies. I'm pretty sure this re this whole thing's gone on for ever and a day. So I got to go inside and chop out the bits where I'm fiddling with the camera and stuff like that. <laughs> so anyways, I probably won't see another movie for a long time. Depends on what comes out. I'm waiting on Captain America. Oh, by the way, previously I got Captain America. I got in front of this one. Uh, Box Trolls I got in front of Lego Movie, which looks really good. Uh, it's from the makers of Paranorman and Caroline, I think it was. So, Paranorman, for the most part, was a good movie. It's come to aspects I didn't care for, but overall, good movie. Um, so, that, that'd be a good one. They're doing a freaking Wizard of Oz movie. A 3D computer-generated Wizard of Oz movie. No. I, I looked at it, and it's like trying to be this... DreamWorksy kind of thing, and no, look, they're the they're and it's like uh, it's like Dorothy's Return or something like that, which I'm like, and they said Return to Oz in in the trailer, and I'm like, they already did that movie, and it was way probably way better than this thing's gonna be. So then there's like, a lot of freaking humor that they keep doing, where it's like, you know, sass and and. And potty humor and crap like that. And I got, what else I got? I got uh, Peabody and Sherman, which I've heard some people say it's not that bad. It doesn't look that bad. I've heard, I've seen Film Brains Projector uh, video about it. So I might give it a, give it a watch. It would be good if maybe they made like a Bill, Bill and Ted or Doctor Who reference in there somewhere. I mean, there kind of is with the Wayback Machine going through, you know, a tunnel. So, um, so there's that. What else? Um, 22 Jump Street. Because the building the building in front of it, the building the 21 Jump Street got sold. So they went across the street to 22 Jump Street. So what's going to be the excuse that they end up making a third movie? They're going to move next door just because... So they can call it 23 Jump Street? I mean, what? I, I didn't see the I didn't see the first one. First of all, when they, when they take serious dramas and turn them into comedies, no, okay, no. Same reason why I would never watch the Will Ferrell Land of the Lost. 
it should have been called Land of the Lost Opportunity because friggin' I don't even know how the heck Sid and Marty Croft signed off on that or even if they did. Uh, they could have made Land of the Lost something way better than it was. I, I didn't see it, but I know it wasn't good. It's just like the Smurfs movie. You don't have to see it. Um, I'm trying to remember what else I saw uh, previous for. The X-Men... Uh, <sighs> Days of Future Past, which doesn't look that good. And I saw two different trailers for Spider-Man, which um, I'm afraid of this movie. Why am I afraid of this movie? Okay, real quick here. Batman and Spider-Man, both in their third installments, mind you, did a thing where they tried to shoehorn too many characters into the movie. And it killed it. You can have side characters as long as they're peripheral. As long as, you know, you don't spend a good chunk of the movie on them. Real quick, I'm trying to get through this fast. First Batman movie, you had... Three characters to worry about. Love interest, Batman, and villain. That's it. Second movie, you had, again, three characters. Two bad guys. Love interest was a, was a bad guy, so that was a mixed. And then, of course, the hero. Third movie, Two-Face, Riddler, which took most of the movie. Robin, Batman, and a love interest. Cluster mess. Fourth movie, Way too many characters to count, and you know, of course, I started the train, the trend of not putting Bane in a movie, which of course, <laughs> Dark Knight Rises picked up and did again. So, yeah, way too much in a movie. Spider-Man Three did the same thing. Too many characters to worry about. You had the return of friggin', you know, Osborn there as the new Goblin. You had Sandman, and you had not Venom. So. This movie, Spider-Man, Amazing Spider-Man 2, they're showing you that there's going to be a Goblin at least, there's going to be Doc Ock, uh, they show quite obviously what's supposed to be uh, Rhino, which is in a metal armor, not the kind of, you know, suit that he apparently can not physically be removed from, you know, that's sort of just bonded to him. I don't know, it's supposed to be like concrete or something. Regardless, it's like this metal armor, which you see the thing come down with the horn on it. Um, of course, you have Electro. So it looks like this is going to be like... Every, and I, I remarked to some guy who, who who watched the trailer was sitting next to me, you know, a couple of seats over. And he's like, man, why do they always show the good parts in the trailers? And I'm like, be honest with you, with as many, you know, villain cameos that they got in this, it looks like DC's heading, heading this up, you know? So anyway, so th those were the trailers I got. I'm pretty sure there's a couple of them in there that I, I, I forgot or didn't see the, the whole of. But anyway, so that's it. Um, if, I, if I go to see another movie within the rest of the year, I guess I'll, I'll do the same thing again, especially if I'm looking forward to it. So thank you. Bye.